Hello everyone, I'm with Shockwave of X Oblivion. We're here to talk about our WCS, the many patch changes, the bracket changes, and some other changes. But before of that, Shockwave, I wanted to get your take on obviously if we cast our minds all the way back a couple of patches ago now to the group stage. You actually had a pretty close series against um, SSG, ended up losing 3-2. You talk to us a bit about what ended up going wrong in that series for you. Um, I think, first of all, we were a bit too late to swap to the Reaper. Uh, like, the days leading up to the match, I think we were heavily playing, like, Sojourn. I still like the Doom comp even in some places, but I think, uh, especially the Monkey comp. Like, that comp in Kyriol is just a, almost a guaranteed fight win against the Doom, right? Um, so we kind of pivoted to Reaper, but I think even in the match, I think on like uh, Servasa, I started on Sojourn, but uh, yeah, it was just too hard. Uh, so yeah, I think genuinely we were a little bit too slow to swap to the Reaper, um, because I think it it was for sure winnable uh, with Reaper. Even though like the match we actually won was with Sojourn, I guess, <laughs> but like... Um, the map, like geometry, right, made sense for Sojourn, mm. so that obviously had a factor as well. But yeah, I think we should have got some more Reaper here and there. And then we go, you end up having to then obviously play the second half of group stage as well, which means you get hit with the Malga patch in between. So it was probably, I think, like maybe three or four days practice then on the Malga patch, but you guys didn't even necessarily go a very Malga direction. You played a lot of Orisa, so... How how was it trying to figure out the comps after the patch, and how did you end up locking in the horse? Mm, I feel like we were a little bit late to the Malga uh, and like plague and stuff, so we were kind of still hanging on to the Risa, and like we wanted to like limit test it. But because I mean these patches, like it just it, stuff is changing so quick <laughs> right now that um, like I feel like we you need like a certain amount of time to probably limit it like you can't just play scrim one day and then just say okay yeah this comp is is dead you know so i think we were kind of hanging on to it and we had some success maybe a bit map dependent um but yeah i think i think we kind of came to the conclusion that if we play it right it's winnable um so and i think that kind of goes in general like you can play i think a decent amount of comps right now you know uh, Maybe not the Marga patch. <laughs> um, maybe Marga is a bit strong there, but I think in general, it's you can you can definitely be a bit flexible. So, and then it ends up going. It's a pretty straightforward win in the end, and you get your top yeah. eight spot. And then you set out your week to plan how to play on the Marga patch. And then a couple of days into it, I don't know if you were even screaming at the time when it happened, but you get hit with a patch last night. And you know, all the, the changes revert, changes are reverted. How do you feel about this? I guess with it being like so close to like two days out from a tournament, mm, I'm a bit mixed feelings about it. Um, I think for our team that weren't really leaning in a Malga direction as a team, even though the meta was maybe going there, I think it's probably good for us. So on that note, we shouldn't really complain. Um, but. I think it's like, of course, I think it's a bit crazy to do two days before matches. Uh, I think people have practiced so much and it's like so heavily detailed and they just, just like, just scrabble stuff in, uh, like up, you know, like just, now you can play all sorts of heroes and people have to think about other comps and yeah, so I think the timing of it is not too good, but I will say though, I do like that they actually seems like they want to fix stuff pretty quick i feel like if this was in the past we would have had malga for maybe a year <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> like, or at least a stage a, right yeah i mean at least a stage or two uh but like a long time so i think hopefully i mean you know fixing annoying stuff fast is is, is good i think but i think in the first place it's kind of just them making up for their mistake right like they made the mistake of buffing those zeros so it probably could have been avoided. Um, but yeah, I think for our team perspective, not too bad. Uh, but yeah, in terms of competition uh, and stuff, maybe not the greatest thing. <laughs> I, I guess the risk is maybe this this time round it goes for you, but maybe next time round you end up on the, the wrong yeah. side of a patch change or something. Yeah. yeah. 
Who knows? Yeah, it creates it creates a lot of chaos, I think, for all teams and like everyone's scrambling to figure stuff out yeah. right before the end. And then I want to talk about a bracket as well because we've not just had new patches. We've got new brackets, old brackets, back and forth with brackets as well. So yeah, you've, I mean, you have you now find yourself on the twisted mind side of a bracket. Are you happier with this side or less happy with this side? I feel like how it is right now uh, in this tournament is that you have twisted um, and Bubo. Bubo? Is that what they call Bubo? Yeah, Bubo spray check. Bubo spray check. Um, and uh, London or uh, Space Station. And I feel like you got kind of got to get through those teams no matter what. Like, so if they're, you know, if they're on your side of the bracket, if they're not, I think you, you will probably end up be like, um, not being, uh, meeting them uh, later on in the tournament if you go that far. So I think it doesn't really matter uh, too much uh, which side of the bracket we're on. Uh, I think maybe some of the comps they play uh will be better for us um i think because if teams can't go monkey i think into us genuinely uh it probably is better i think like in like orissa comps and and stuff generally like main tanks would counter i think the comps we're more leaning towards probably um so maybe there's a slight advantage there but again i think those those three teams, I think you, you will you will probably guaranteed meet anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, it does feel like at least an EMEA and there's maybe not like an easy side of a bracket, really. It's not one you look at uh, and go like, oh, yeah, this one will be a free ride to semis or something. It's like a tough ride no matter which way. Yeah. Do you think that with the frequent patch changes and everything sort of being made quite chaotic, do you think that actually favours the underdog team? So if we maybe to look at you versus some of this, I guess, like big three, if you want to call them that. Do you think the chaos and everyone all having to figure stuff out last minute actually helps or makes an upset more likely? Mm, I think this current patch is more rewarding maybe for flexibility. I think, which probably helps us because I think we can flex a bit more with our tank, with Chase. Um, so I think that's probably a bit better for us. I wouldn't say it's better for the not, like, not the top teams because I think it's it's more dependent on on like how flexible they can be because the previous patch i think it was hard to be flexible because margo just played like you're just a hard one trick meta right yeah so you, just, you had to play the meta or you were on your back for like it was very hard and but now it seems that you know it's definitely more winnable in other comps and i think that probably benefits us but i yeah no i wouldn't say that it just it benefits all the um uh, the lesser good teams so i think maybe teams that are more flexible i think can maybe benefit more because if we look at your first opponent, you're also going to be playing into Rock Esports, who maybe have the same issue where TVNT very much probably isn't going to be going Winston, yeah, probably isn't going to be going Doomfist and these things. So how confident do you feel? Because I, I think a lot of people, if they were doing power rankings, they probably put like, you and Rock are always going to be like the fourth or fifth team around now. Yeah. So how do you feel you're on the, the fourth or the fifth spot in that? Um, I mean, I feel like we should at least be four. I think, and we should. I think we should. I mean, we should be able to to compete with with the rest. Um, I mean, we could. We might as well just have one against Space Station, right? And then maybe the power rankings look a bit different. Yeah. I think the top seems pretty close. I I don't know how much it's depending on meta. <laughs> mm. yeah, um, well, yeah, uh, but they do seem fairly close. I think maybe we have an advantage over over Rock in terms of like flexibility. I think that might um, cause them some issues, uh, especially like, you know, different maps and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do think we have an edge over them there. So. And then if I was to ask you what team you were maybe most scared or most or thought was the toughest team you could probably run into in this tournament, who do you think is probably like top of that EMEA power rankings right now? Um. See, it's a bit funny because I actually think there's no like high, like super dominant team in the EU because I think everyone kind of has flaws. Like I feel like the thing about Twisted and 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 Spray Take is that they don't really have main tanks. Like if it's a hard monkey meta, or you saw even um, Space Station, right? They were like uh, yeah. playing monkey, Sombra, and stuff, and it was actually kind of working for them. And then 
these guys they're hot they're forced to go like off tanks like sorry Cree or sorry Cassidy <laughs> and um, and Diva uh, Torp like counter comp like that you know um, I think that might be yeah that, that, I don't know I feel like honestly it's very very even I would maybe say spray check I think the fact that you have Kev I think he can just I think he can diff so much on so many heroes. So you're flexible on that front, right? Um, but I also think Gunva for sure. I think he kind of... I think he kind of also carries, or not carries, but like definitely helps that team. Um, whereas maybe Twisted could use a Gunva sometimes <laughs> with the, what, what they're swapping to and stuff. So. Well, I think, yeah, one thing, if we go backwards in patch, it really just opens up all these comp things. So suddenly you don't just need to know like how to play Malga into Malga and that you have to play well even if i want to keep playing malgo how do i play it into orissa how do i play it into ram what if i go yeah. dive what's my swaps all of this so it becomes like very messy and way more complicated than it initially was when we got like the first patch do you think then that spray checker in some ways probably ones who have benefit the most because i think some people may be looking at the malga patch and thinking well, we're not seeing a lot of Tracer now. We're seeing a lot of Reaper, a lot of Symmetra, a lot of Sombra, maybe not like classic Kev heroes. Yeah. Do you think then you've actually then essentially just got like a power spike now they've got the comps have all opened up a little bit for them? Yeah, I think it's definitely a small help for them. But I still think if you can make Winston work, then it's not necessarily that good. Like that might end up like, you know, maybe they get like plus one with getting off Sim or something, but we might get plus two of getting off the Malgacom and, you know, getting on Monkey maybe. Because maybe they can't, right? Or they don't want to. Um, so, without being too optimistic, <laughs> <laughs> I will probably say that, I mean, I feel like it should be us that's benefited the most. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, I, I, do, I do think getting Kevin Tracer, you know, is never a bad thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's, it is fair to say that it's probably like, it's probably Chase and Hadi who are really the two tanks when you look in terms of like flexibility and playing different types of heroes. I think it's really those two that comes with a four for kind of out of all of these top eight teams in terms of that, that option it provides to the teams. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, I think mechanically, I think Chase is, he might have a slight edge on like if you look like overall, because I feel like he's also playing like some off tanks maybe. But you can definitely tell Hardy has like the macro, you know? Mm, like he's just yeah. been under that brain of Christopher, you know, for <laughs> quite some time. So he's very good at like just pressing tab. Okay, I need to do this. Done, you know? There's not too much uh, inting and then, you know, have to look through it through the map and then, okay, learn. So, yeah. But I'm not complaining at all. I think we can have a good chance. Does it ever provide some problems where like, because Chase can play everything and even, you know, we've had Chow talk about before of like, oh, Chase can play these things and you can go between, say, Hitscan and Echo. So you can swap between Dive and Brawl type comps quite easily. But because you have all these options and you've only got a week to prepare for potentially a few different opponents, is it yeah. almost too much choice? Whereas if I maybe someone like Twisted Minds, I'm like, well, I know what type of comp I'm going to play. I just need to know how to play this comp versus Archetype A, Archetype B, Archetype C or whatever it is. Yeah, I think, I mean, I feel like sometimes you can pretty quickly feel if it just, it doesn't feel right. But I think it's also, it's not like it's it's too different from what has been in the past. Like, there's no Ilari, there's no Life Weaver. Mm. You know, so, like, the past years of Overwatch 2 has, like, it's kind of similar in many ways. Like, if you end up on the Monkey Soldier Tracer Lucy Kiri, like, you've pretty much been there before, right? And yeah. sat there screaming that like like a like a slave, you know, like a robot or something, just playing that same stuff day in day out. So, um, that should hopefully be graved how to <laughs> how you play that comp. Um, so I think there's not too many mixes sometimes of comp. Like you you generally know what's good into to what comps. Um, but I think we we have um like a Cloud and Knilder playing Saudi as well. So I think sometimes yeah. we maybe haven't had like as many blocks as some of the other teams, like as a full team, right? Um so I think maybe that that's more been a fact of not actually not, you know we have days and we have time maybe, but actually we might not have the full team, you know? So 
Are they going out there for the top six as well? Uh, yeah, they are flying as we're recording this, I think. Oh, okay, they, yeah. They, cause... On, they might be on a plane right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think, I think Twisted Minds, I imagine Rock... I know Twisted Minds are for sure, but I imagine Rock are as well, are playing all of their games from the... From the um, I forget the name, but from the arena for Saudi League yeah. as well. Well, I think because they won, their matches are later. I think Ye there's a delay to like after. Because uh, they they skip the first round of the knockout essentially. I think, yeah. I think yeah, yeah. Yeah, I so. think that's yeah, that's true. So busy couple of days for them. Obviously, means I guess they'll be playing on ping, right? Because it's Netherlands server, no matter what. So you're actually getting yeah. a small yeah. A small ping I mean, nerf at I feel like the ping is I'm just time. pressing fingers like the setup, you know? Because it's very very famous for not, you know, always having the most stable connection or setup, you know, or then, you know, it's the classic. They might show by the you know, uh, into the cafe and then oh, you know, oh this PC doesn't have Overwatch or there can be many, many issues, you know. So yeah, kinda well, praying that yeah, nothing goes wrong that department. Yeah. Yeah, when I spoke to Twisted, they seemed pretty comfortable and happy with the, like, ah, everything will be fine, we're not worried about it. So hopefully, well, fingers crossed for everyone. I mean, I yeah. guess in some ways it might make your game against Rock quite easy if they can't connect, but... <laughs> yeah, that is but, yeah. if they're at the same place. Well, yeah, but yeah, fingers crossed. Obviously, it works out for everyone, but thank you very much, Shockwave. I do appreciate your time. Squeeze this one in between a couple of blocks of scrims as well, yeah. so we're really, really min max in our days. But well, thank you for your time, and good luck for the weekend. All right. Thank you.